Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of T3 Alliance Weekly Lesson Update. So today, um, we are about to get ready for um, um, how you do a project. So first, I should tell you, I'm not presenting from Chester's shop. He's a little busy today, so I'm presenting from my own house. I don't have quite all the things set up, but, but today is kind of a, a, a day when we'll explore what you can have kids do as a project with um, with the skills that they've got up to now. They know how to use Node-RED, they know how to uh, cook, hook up their speakers, hook up their, uh, or no, not hook up their speakers, but they know how to hook up buttons and cameras and hopefully they've had a little time to play around. So this is an opportunity when I usually like to say, let's let's try building something and really playing around and today we're going to emphasize one of the awesome uh, activities that come um, from the raspberry pi foundation so let me jump over to my just desktop here this is some stuff that's going on in the background but i'll point out um, i'll point out the raspberry pi foundation has a tutorial called the, the whoopee cushion prank project and as we look at this hello we follow i'm on. james from the raspberry pi foundation the whoopee cushion was a practical joke toy which when sat on would produce an amusing fart noise right so that kind of stuff now i'll have this link to the youtube in put this in video here. i'm going to show you how to build your own whoopies. <laughs> yeah so it's kind of funny there's two things that go along with this one and again i'll put it on here but the raspberry pi foundation website has uh, a full set of instructions that go along with what this this is and it, I should I should step back and just say the Raspberry Pi Foundation has tons of awesome resources that you can lose yourself in or your you and your students can lose yourself in the big difference between what a lot of the Raspberry Pi Foundation's projects come up with and what we come up with are the emphasis on programming with Python and the emphasis on programming with Node Red we tend to think Node Red's a little easier, but in general, uh, both of them get you to the same place. They're just different languages, ways of saying the same thing. So in this project, you would need some of these crocodile clip cables, which come in your kit. I think, uh, I don't know where I have mine, but anyway, they are out there. These little cables, they're very handy and they can be as long as you want them to be. Right now you've got you know, a couple feet right here, but I have taken uh, wire that comes from extension cords. Just take a simple extension cord, and if you know that one end is one type of wire and the other end is the other type of wire, you can put this this whoopee cushion 30 feet away um, to make the trigger. And then a couple of male to female jumper wires, a set of speakers, or as you guys find, the speakers that are built into your computer work just fine. So it works well for that. And then some other handy things, paper plates, cardboard, aluminum foil, glue, scissors, sponge, a paper clip, sticky tape, um, some sort of a copper tape. Now these are all materials that you're going to get from wherever you've got your, get your material supply stuff, but you could go and, um, you know, modify this to be something slightly different. Now the first component here making the whoopee cushion like like this thing um i have to say they they do such a good job going through this and describing you know, to build. what the process to build is like the cushion, you're going to, for the electronics we're also going to need some copper tape or alternatively some extra tin foil some glue and some wire to attach to your raspberry pi right. ideally these should be some crocodile clips that you attach to some jumper wires to begin, take your paper plates and glue some tin foil onto the inside. If you want your paper plates to last a bit longer, you might want to put a bit of thick cardboard underneath first, and that will give your paper plate a bit more rigidity. The next step is to take some copper tape or some more tin foil and make a track from the tip. So what you can see here is you are essentially making a really awesome button. There it is. At this stage, we could it's a button. We're going to use it could become an of the plate. You could it could become a button. You could some bulldog clips like this to hold the plate tight. Okay, when zoom forward just a little bit. Take a croc contacts. This could be a button that could be, uh, that could be somebody walks into a door. Somebody does something else. And notice that the two clips are on either side of the button. And so 
when someone sits on a couch or somebody does something, then some kind of event is triggered. We've taught you about using the camera. So you could make it so you open a door and cha-ching, there's a camera photo being taken. You could make it so that a button is something else. You guys know that this is the button, you know, that we've worked with here. Um, there are tutorials on there and they describe in, in great detail what the, the process looks like for uh, putting together a button um, that's just simply uh, very straightforward. A ground pin and a pin to GPIO2 and that's all you need to do a basic button. So when GPI2 gets pressed then it knows that it's there. So that's kind of the simple setup. Remember it could be as long as it wants. And then testing the sound. So here's where um, you probably needed to go somewhere and get the sound of a fart or of a something. And as they explain in this video, you just go and Google. And as I found um, very easily, here's a picture of my pie. If I went up and I just typed in fart sounds, fart sounds, uh, you'll find lots and lots of fart sounds. It, it can be very annoying. Uh, remember again, this doesn't need to be um, this doesn't need to be uh, fart related, but in this situation it could be. Um, so you download a fart sound so that it's on your computer somewhere, and then the question is going to be, how do I set up my Pi so that it's doing this stuff? If you are one of these people who are in um, who are also into Python, then you can follow the Raspberry Shake or the Raspberry Pi Foundation's instructions here to write the program in Python that's specifically, um, you know, related to causing this whoopee cushion to function. For us, it's going to be slightly different. And I'll remind us, let me jump over to this one, that once you've started up Node Red, well, first I'm going to close here and say, let's think of a simple button and what it does. If our button is hooked up, now unfortunately I just unconnected my button so it stopped right there. When I push the button it goes from a 0 to a 1. That means a message gets sent across there. Um, that triggering a sound coming out. Well here's a challenge to you guys and I played around with this. I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna show you uh, how we get started here but then I'm gonna leave and allow for us to, to work together and or you guys to, to, to figure this out. Um, but if we know we've got a button, we know that, that that button sends a signal, then we should be able to make something so that the audio, when you push that button, it triggers a file to be played. Now, of course, this is a classic input-output scenario. So the input is, you know, your button uh, or an inject node. Um, this little symbol here is for the Raspberry Shake to be your input or not your Raspberry Pi to be your input button, your pin, whatever. Um, but your output, when we look down here, what kind of outputs do we have? We have MQTT, we have debug node, we have make a link. Um, these are certain outputs. Um, a function node would be something to switch your button push into something. Um, that's not going to be super helpful here. Um, or to do something or convert it or do something to it. But this last one here of all right I want it to do something um, anyway you get to this one right here the audio out file it plays an audio or text to speech one I didn't find this one did what I wanted it to do so I came to that scenario where I had to do a Google search on all right what what is the best way to play an audio file because we know we can download an mp3 audio file onto our Pi but then we're gonna have to come up with um, something that helps along with this so um, I'm gonna go back here and help you see what I searched play sound node red when I did that look at this the very first result that comes up is is somebody who's from the node red community has made a contribution to the thing so this Node Red contribution says um, it will play a sound based on the Node Red JS. Uh, I have to either run the install way. This could be if I run it from the command line, um, and it gives me the ability to play a file where it's start, stop, and that kind of stuff. So um, it looks like it's an open license, and I'm now going to show you how 
we can get this file without having to use the command lines associated with our Pi. So if I go to Node Red and I'm over here and I say, all right, there's a button that I just learned about that I don't see in here. I really wish I had the ability to do this. You can come over here and click on this little, this little three bars is what I call the hamburger icons. And if I go down to settings, click here. Okay. And then I say, all right, I'm looking for what are the palette? The palette are all the nodes that are out there in the world that people have built to help things out with. So here's one for, you know, NeoPixel. Here's one for Ping. Here's one for Twitter. Look at all these different nodes. These are basically places where people have written nodes that have become part of it. So if I click install right here and it says, hey, search the web for different modes or different modules that can go along with that. I'm going to go up here just so I make sure to copy the title right. And if I copy this thing, node red, contribute, play sound. Whoop. I'll copy this. And I'll paste it. Paste it right here. Paste. And then I search. Oh, look at it right there. And look what it tells me. It says, hey, do you want to install this thing? And I say, oh, yes, I do. And it says, all right, install. Now I go through my whole thing. It does its install. And as long as everything works out, I should be able to make it so that when my button is pushed, then the downloaded file that I play can be played. I once made a, a or I once had some students who made a, like a, a, a door alarm so that when they opened up a door, it was a closet in my classroom. When a door was opened in my classroom, out came a sound file that said, you shall not enter. And we had some secret hidden speakers off in the distance. Um, I'm going to let you go ahead and play around with this. Um, and I'll come back later once I've got mine all set up. You guys go ahead and see if you can try it out and make sure it works. And, um, yeah, I'm not sure why it's taken as long as it is, but you can imagine it's going to be some combination of downloading that file, saving it to a certain spot. It's also going to be having your button trigger that, that, that signal and then testing it out with your speakers. And as you guys know, you can use speakers that are like this, you know, use your, your audio output file so you can have a long speaker wire that goes to your classroom and scares everybody, or it could be something else. But this is an activity, it's fun, and when kids do it, they start coming up with more ideas of ways they could make things that could be useful to somebody. We've had kids in Hawaii here come up with pig detection advices. No added to palette. Play sound. Awesome! So... I'm going to close this little guy right here, and somewhere the play sound node should be out there. Play sound. I can search it up here if it comes up here. Hmm. I wonder where it added it. Maybe if I search just play. There it is, play sound. Okay. Let's take that guy, drag it down here, and as we can imagine, double click on it and start messing around with what its options are. Player options, audio, audio options. Okay, and as we do with anything, once we start downloading it, um, we can notice that there's a little message over here. Input is message payload. Just any input, message payload, stop pause, resume. So you could come up with all sorts of ones that go along with it. So um, I haven't played with this. I'm going to let you guys play with it, but but in the comments section or on the forum here, let's let's talk about how we do. Please, please, if you, if you get some success or have some cool, fun thing that you guys come up with, take a picture, take a video, share about it. We all learn from each other as we're going through and working on these kind of things. So with that being said, this I know this is a short show today. Um, next week, I will be in Puerto Rico. I don't know if we're going to be able to do a show from Puerto Rico, but we will do 
our best to see if we can make it happen. Um, it should be fun. We're going to be working with a group of students building some autonomous vehicles and, and uh, playing with the Raspberry Shake and some other things. So um, I look forward to catching up with you next week and have a wonderful, wonderful week. All right. Bye, everybody.